Hi everyone. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about FNFL. What is this drug FNFL? The suffix FL indicates this drug is a selective phosphodiesterase type 5 inhibitor. We have few of the other drugs with similar suffix such as sildenafil, vadinafil, tadalafil. All these are having the same suffix FL which indicates they are PD-5 inhibitors. But the selectivity is somewhat different among these drugs. For instance, sildenafil and vadinafil are the two drugs which also inhibit the activity of phosphodiesterase type 6 enzyme. But the tadalafil and avanafil are more selective towards the phosphodiesterase type 5 enzyme. So today in this video, we are going to discuss about this avanafil, how this drug acts, what are the clinical uses, important precautions, side effects, drug interactions, and doses, all these things we will discuss in this video. So, Avanafil as a phosphodiesterase type 5 inhibitor, this drug is indicated for the treatment of erectile dysfunction. This drug is having few of the advantages compared with the previous drugs. This drug is a newer agent compared with the other drugs and it is more selective towards the inhibition of phosphodiesterase type 5 enzyme. So, because of this selectivity, Avanafil is having less visual side effects which is related with the inhibition of phosphodiesterase type 6 enzyme. Similarly, another advantage of this drug is that this drug is having the faster onset of action. So, this drug can be given 30 minutes before the intercourse and when the dose is going to be further increased and when the dose is greater than 100 mg, this drug can be given even 15 minutes before the intercourse. In this way, this drug is having some fast onset of action and it can be given once daily and because of more selectivity, it shows less visual side effects. Now let us the chemical nature of this drug. So this is the structure of Avanafil. Here we can identify the principal functional group. This is the principal functional group which is nothing but the carboxamide. This carboxamide is attached to the pyrimidine ring system. So let us give the numbering to this pyrimidine ring system. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So amide is attached at the fifth position. We can write this as pyrimidine 5 carboxamide. On the nitrogen of amide, another chain is present containing pyrimidine ring system. So we can write this as N dash pyrimidine 2 ile methyl. So simply avanafil is a pyrimidine 5 carboxamide derivative which is having another pyrimidine ring attached to the methyl group on the nitrogen. Then we can identify the further attachments. At the fourth position, we can observe an amino group. So, we can write this as 4 amino. This amine group is further attached with the benzyl ring with some side chains. So, this is nothing but 3 chloro 4 methoxy benzyl. That is the group present on the amine group at the fourth position. Similarly, at the second position, pyrrolidine ring system is present. So, 2 dash pyrrolidine 1 ion, which is having a hydroxy methyl group at second position. So, 2 hydroxymethyl. That is the complete name of avanafil. So, avanafil is a pyrimidine 5 carboxamide derivative. Now, let us see how this drug acts. One of the primary action of avanafil is the carpus cavernosum. So, here nitric oxide plays an important role. The nitric oxide is going to be synthesized within the neurons from L arginine as the precursor. This L arginine can be converted into nitric oxide by nitric oxide synthase enzyme. So, this nitric oxide then can enter into the carpus cavernosum. Similarly, some of the nitric oxide can also be released from the endothelial cells. In this way, nitric oxide which enters into the carpus cavernosum acts as an important mediator to produce relaxation. This nitric oxide can elevate the cyclic GMP levels which promotes the relaxation. But this cyclic GMP is going to be metabolized to GMP which controls the action of nitric oxide. Now, avanafil can inhibit this metabolism, thereby it can increase the cyclic GMP levels and it can promote the action of nitric oxide. So, within the carpus cavernosum, the relaxation is mediated by MLCK mechanism, myosin light chain kinases. This MLCK should be activated to MLCK activated form, which then act on the MLC myosin light chains such that it can produce the phosphorylation of these chains to produce 
myosin light chain phosphate mlc phosphate this mlc phosphate then can bind to the actin such that it can form actomyosin complex this actomyosin complex can slide on each other to produce contraction of the smooth muscle but here nitric oxide can control the contraction this nitric oxide can stimulate the garnell cyclase system gc which can convert the gtp into an important secondary messenger cyclic gmp now cyclic gmp can control the contraction of smooth muscle by several ways one of its action is to promote inactivation of the mlck by converting it into its phosphorylated form so mlck is going to be converted into mlck phosphate which is the inactive form similarly it can also block the conversion of mlck into its active form by these two actions it can reduce the contractile mechanism at the same time cyclic gmp can also control the inward calcium channels these channels are inactivated in presence of cyclic gmp such that it can produce significant relaxation within the smooth muscle in this way nitric oxide produce relaxation of the corpus cavernosum but the action of cyclic gmp is terminated by its metabolism the cyclic gmp can be converted into gmp by one of the enzyme phosphodiesterase type 5 enzyme so in the patients with erectile dysfunction the cyclic gmp levels are not sufficient to produce relaxation so without significant relaxation erection cannot takes place so in such patients evanafil can increase the relaxation this evanafil selectively inhibits the phosphodiesterase type 5 enzyme thereby it increase the cyclic gmp levels when the cyclic gmp levels are increased relaxation is promoted in this way evanafil increase the action of nitric oxide to produce erection in the patients what are the precautions one of the important precaution of evanafil is on the cardiovascular system evanafil can increase the underlying cardiovascular disorders in the patients so if so the patients already having any cardiovascular disorders such as unstable angina myocardial infarction aortic stenosis recent strokes or congestive heart failure if any of these underlying cardiovascular disorders are present in such patients evanafil should be carefully given because it further increase the risk of cardiovascular disorders and evanafil can increase the chest pain due to the angina it can also produce vasodilatation which reduce the blood pressure so this drug should be carefully given in the patients who are having cardiovascular disorders and the important precaution of this drug is on the eye so this effect is related with the action on pde6 evanafil shows less effect on the phosphodiesterase type 6 enzyme but when this drug is given in the patients with non arteritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy naion in these patients there is no inflammation of the eye but there is an ischemia which reduce the blood flow thereby produce damage to the optic nerve in such patients we can observe a sudden loss of vision when this evanafil is used so even this drug is having less visual side effects but in the patients with naion it should be carefully given similarly evanafil can produce priapism this is a condition of prolonged erection which may persist up to 6 hours when this prolonged erection is observed more than 4 hours then it can produce some painful erection Similarly, this drug can produce some sudden loss of hearing with few other symptoms such as increased dizziness and tinnitus, some buzzing noise in the ear. So, any symptoms of loss of hearing should be carefully monitored when this evanafil is prescribed. Similarly, we can observe a significant interaction with alcohol. Alcohol inhibits the phosphodiesterase type 5 enzyme activity. Now we know that evanafil selectively inhibits this enzyme. So, when both alcohol as well as evanafil are co-administered they can produce severe vasodilatation this vasodilatation results in few of the symptoms such as dizziness headache increased heart rate and decreased standing blood pressure so in these patients we can observe a sudden drop attacks because of significant vasodilatation now let us see the drug interactions of this evanafil Evanafil is going to be converted into metabolites within the liver by cytochrome P450 system. Among them, CYP3A4 is one of the important enzyme. So we have many of the drugs which act as strong inhibitors of CYP3A4. 
few of the drugs such as ketoconazole, ritonavir, erythromycin, itraconazole, even grapefruit juice. All these can inhibit the CYP3A4 activity which increase the action of evanafil. Similarly, if you have the drugs such as rifampin, carbamjepine, phenytoin, phenobarbital, all these are enzyme inducers. They can promote the activity of CYP3A4 enzyme, thereby increase the metabolism of evanafil. So, these drug interactions should be thoroughly checked when this evanafil is co-admitted with these drugs. Another important drug interaction is observed with the organic nitrates. We have few of the organic nitrates such as nitroglycerin, isosorbide dinitrate, isosorbide mononitrate, all these are the drugs used to treat the angina. These drugs are going to increase the release of nitric oxide which produce hypotension and evanafil can also produce the hypotension. So some gap should be maintained between these organic nitrates and evanafil. So these two drugs shows significant drug interaction and they should not be co-administered. A 12 hours gap should be maintained between the evanafil and organic nitrates. Similarly, evanafil can produce hypotension. We have so many other drugs which produce again hypotension. For instance, alpha 1 blockers such as prazosine, doxazosine, terazosine, alfijosine, and even alpha 1A blocker tamsulosine. All these drugs can produce hypotension. Similarly, calcium channel blockers such as amlodipine, nifedipine. ERBs, angiotensin receptor blockers such as sartans, losartan, valsartan, candisartan, AC inhibitors such as enlapril, ramipril, beta blockers such as metoprolol, all these drugs can produce hypotension and when they are combined with evanafil, they can produce significant hypertension. What are the side effects? The side effects of evanafil are mainly related with the vasodilatory effects. It can produce few of the side effects such as headache, flushing, dizziness, nasal congestion, nasopharyngitis, some back pain, arthralgia, joint pain, dyspepsia, diarrhea, chest pain, bronchitis, and loss of hearing can be observed within the patients. How it is given? This drug is available as tablets and it is available at three strengths such as 50 mg, 100 mg, and 200 mg. The initial dose of the drug is given at 100 mg, given 30 minutes before the intercourse. Then, and the dose can be increased up to maximum dose such as 200 mg. But the initial dose can also be adjusted in few of the patients where 50 mg dose is used as initial dose. So that's about the drug Evanafil, which is a selective phosphodiesterase type 5 inhibitor. This drug is indicated for the treatment of erectile dysfunction and it is somewhat selective and neuroagent and because of fast onset of action it can be given 15 to 30 minutes before the intercourse. Cardiovascular event should be carefully monitored when this drug is prescribed and it can produce few of the vasodilatory effects like flushing, headache, dizziness and drowsiness and this drug can be initiated at a dose of 100 mg initially but the dose can be increased up to 200 mg. Otherwise, the dose can be reduced to 50 mg based on the conditions of the patients. So that's about this drug Evanafil. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.